Welcome to Mediogre Gaming, and today we're playing Hogwarts Legacy. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Zero. Let's get to it. All right, so today we're doing rooms and brooms and secrets and more secrets. But before we get to that, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to be notified of all future episodes as soon as they go live. So let's get into it. So this is our first broom lesson coming into Hogwarts. Uh, apparently, everyone's forgotten everything about anything related to magic over the summer holiday. And they have to go over even the most basic stuff like uh, how to get your broom ready to go. Even though, as we've seen in our previous video, that there is no quidditch because of what the headmaster has done. So if you've not seen that one, go ahead and take a look. Now we're going to look at how to ride a broom, and this will make our travels across the wizarding land much, much faster. Uh, we'll be able to explore areas that we weren't able to before, and we'll be able to travel very quickly around the land if we want to go uh, without fast traveling, of course. So this will give us one method to do so. All right. So right off the bat, no problems getting the broomstick to obey us. Uh, they're all the school broomsticks, which of course are, you know, the... The old ratty, old ratty brooms. The uh, the old, well-worn equipment. Even if it was brand new, I'm sure uh, the students would be complaining about the quality of whatever they're used because they didn't <laughs> they didn't have to pay for it. So, in the books, in the movies, even here. You, you hear about how the students uh, think about these things. And right off the bat, uh, we're just learning the basics. Like, can you, can you actually get through the hoops? Great. <laughs> now that you have the basics, we're going to step it up just a little bit. So you got the right stick, which helps with your elevation. And then you got your, your flight speed. So here we go. And continue on. And you kind of get a... Uh, bird's eye view or broom's eye view of uh, Hogwarts from the lowest to the highest and I know I've mentioned it before but the level of detail that they've put into the visuals into you know just making it look real alive is just really, really cool. So here we go. I mean, we got the rock formations, we've got the waterfalls. So we can see all that that's going on. And making our loop around back to where we started off. And. Maybe not. <laughs> I say, I watched you fly through those rings. You seem to handle yourself. <laughs> you seem to handle yourself on the dusty school broom. How about that? When they're not being used to fly around, they're using them to clean up. I'm Everett Clopton. Am I right in suspecting that a Gryffindor like you might be interested in a high flying adventure? All right, so we've got Clopton, who's resident speed freak on brooms, I guess. What did you have in mind? A bit of a deep so let's see. Speak. Follow 
what he has in mind. Uh, upping the, the ante. Learning a little bit more about how this all works. Adding layers into what you know. So instead of like putting it all out there and saying, okay, this is this is what you do, and then you have to kind of figure it out to start you off with the basics and then move on to how you go faster and then faster yet. So as you can see, even though we're going full tilt, uh, it even says, how's he going so fast? <laughs> Lean forward. So here we go. Speed burst. <laughs> now that's more like it. You sure you're not part hippogriff? So there we go. He's still able to get. I mean, we're supposed to follow him, so it's fine. And the Owlery. That's a bit of solid architecture, isn't it? Flying tips and a jaunt around Hogwarts. This is quite the tour ever. If it was a race, it'd be a little bit different. And there was a Quidditch pitch right on the right hand side there. I think that's the Owlery. Or maybe one hourly. All right, now we're going back to the court courtyard because we're done. <laughs> Hurry up, we're late. And where have you two been? Dun dun dun. Oh, hello, Professor. In trouble. Hefty getting a little bit of extra practice. Oof, hefty points. Mr. Clopton, I am disappointed in you. You're in this class because you're still because you're still not showing yourself, or frankly, you'll broom the proper respect. But Professor, Ooh, not showing yourself or your broom the proper respect. As for you, you do well. To and a word for us. That was some rather good <laughs> so admonishment, but a little bit of encouragement at the same time. Sorry about that business with Kagawa, but you have to admit <laughs> the views were worth it. Yep. Rotten luck. I didn't think Excellent. she'd see us. <laughs> Imelda uh, is the shining star. If I had my own broom. If you can, you should. Spint witches. So there we go. Let's go over to Hogsmeade and look at getting a broom now that we can. If you go over to the broom shop before this, it's always got a lock on it and you can't get in. Oh, and there's a side quest in there. We'll take a look at that at the same time. But we'll go to the uh, Spent Witches first. Even though there's no... No Quidditch having a broom that we can use would be a big deal, uh, at least in getting around uh, around the map without having to fast travel. Or getting two fast travel points that haven't been unlocked yet. Flu Flames. Might as well grab this chest. Unidentified neck item. Haven't found a way to unlock those yet, so... We'll have to work on that as well. So let's see what Alby Weeks has to say and come back to it. Shops been closed since trade routes were disrupted. I had to travel as far as London to meet with my supplier. And I've only just returned, thankfully with inventory. I presume you're in the market for a new broom? 
Got a few rare yew weavers available. Ember dash, silver arrows. Windwisps too. No matter what broom you choose, you'll be pleased. They're all exceptional, both in quality and performance. You said disrupted trade routes caused you to close Spintwitches. Terrible it's been. Trade routes reported as unusable. Evidently criminals were overtaking roads, threatening hamlets. I can fly safely almost anywhere. But you try flying with an inventory of brooms on your back. No easy feat. Right then, back to work. If a particular broom takes your fancy, just let me know. Do you mind sharing more about your brooms? I have a passion for them. Every detail of every model. Take Windwisps, well known for their quality ash handles. Yew Weavers are rare because some fear flying them, likely to do with the Yew One's darker reputation. Then you add the Ember Dash, known for its handsome appearance. Working with brooms every day makes me practically giddy. It's one of many reasons I cherish running this shop. Sounds quite the array of brooms. I'll have a look around. Thank you. All right, so we learned a little bit about what Albie Weeks is all about, what he does, which is selling brooms, but he also tweaks brooms and makes upgrades, and he's been looking for someone to help him out, someone that doesn't have already uh, a lot of preconceived notions about how to fly a broom, which might bias their opinion. So all the brooms are the same price, which means that performance-wise they're all the same. It's just cosmetics. What do you want your broom to look like? So we'll get that one. And now that we have a broom, we should be able to use it to get around, if we so desired. There's just one more way uh, that we can get around. You seem to be a flyer who might be interested in, say... Some Go on. Ha, knew I was right. And that his uh, supplier supply routes have been uh, his supply chain issues. falter as you rise. I believe I can remedy this issue. I have some ideas for enchantments, upgrades, if you will, that will improve the performance of any broom you fly. What I need is someone to conduct a broom flight and report back to me so I can perfect the upgrades. As it happens, another Hogwarts student, Imelda Rays, is using abandoned broom courses for time trials. Clever girl. An ideal situation for collecting flight statistics. If you were to compete for the best time and succeed, then report back to me with how your broom behaved, I could complete work on my first upgrade. What say? How long have you had a passion for brooms? Since the moment I saw my first Quidditch match. Seeing flyers manoeuvre the way they do. Oh, some people continue to have their doubts about me and my ideas. I hope that won't dissuade you from helping. I know I'm onto something. Why do you need me to report to you on this broom flight? I did try to get Imelda to help, but she has some flying habits and quirks that made her difficult to collaborate with. I need a flyer with no bad habits and the knack for flying. Your classmate Everett said you're a natural on a broom. He's forever in here studying the newest models, almost as passionate about brooms as I am. If your rumoured talent for flying can help you beat Imelda's times, then having you assess the broom will be invaluable. Sounds as if you took Kagawa's class. I did. But my focus on the technical elements of brooms rather than the art of flying drove her mad. She thinks it fitting I run spint witches now. I don't reckon either of us ever pictured me batting away bludgers for the Cannons or Puddlemere United. And I find a certain satisfaction in winning over the naysayers who think I may be too young to run this shop. With your help, I can continue proving myself the most knowledgeable purveyor of wizarding sporting goods around. That sounds intriguing. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. It'll be worth your while. If I'm right, the new upgrade ought to enhance brooms in every regard. And I can give you a special price. The time trial should be a bit of fun too. Go to the Quidditch pitch and Imelda Rays will sort you out. So there we go. A little bit of fun and a uh, obstacle time trial course. And... 
getting an upgrade at a uh, hopefully discount. Um, kind of like <laughs> one guy that you come across, he's like, oh, um, I used to be a, a, Hog a poor Hogwarts student too. I'll give you the Hog the Hogwarts special price. It's the regular price. <laughs> So, you know, is it actually a, a better price? You know, you, we'll never know. So it could be normal price. All right. Another field guide page. Help out with our challenges. Get some experience, which, of course, will translate to more levels and more HP. And now let's talk to Clementine. See what she has to say. Charmed. I was musing on the precious butterflies I see near the edge of the forest. Whenever I come near, they fly off into it. When I was at Hogwarts, we truly were forbidden from entering the forest. Told horrible stories about it, and I've had an irrationally intense fear of it ever since. It's silly, but I'm insatiably curious as to where the butterflies go in the forest. You couldn't possibly find out. Could you? You want me to follow the butterflies? I do, yes. If you wouldn't mind. What were the horrible stories you were told about the Forbidden Forest? Oh, goodness. Everything from students being mysteriously beheaded to terrifying spider dens. Oh, trust me. You hear that at 11 years old. It sticks with you. Very well. If I have time, I shall see where they lead. How kind! Students these days have so much more courage than I ever did. You can usually find me right around here. I hope to see you soon. So Clementine wants us to follow the butterflies because they're hiding something. Um, she would do it herself, but she doesn't. She's afraid of going into the Forbidden Forest because it's forbidden. And so she says, hey, you can do that, right? <laughs> So we'll come back to that at some point. Uh, but I want to go talk to Professor Weasley. Got an owl post from her uh, saying come up to the, the fourth floor and meet with her there. Because she's figured out a way that we can do some extra practice, etc. without distraction or uh, you know other people bothering us. So let's go find out what she has in mind and I have an idea but and I'm really excited about if I'm right somewhere away from prying eyes and I think I am from the books and the movies the room of requirement has always been a staple of Hogwarts. And I like how they incorporated going back and forth in front of the door, thinking about, you know, I really need whatever. <laughs> Merlin's beard. You've done it. Good job. Shall we? Off to you, Professor. All right. And we're saying... You first, old lady, in case this is a trap. <laughs> and it looks like they've put it into the uh, I need some place to store something or hide something, which is what was described uh, both in the book and we got to see it in the movie where it was just a big cluster of things, at least until it got burned down. So this is pretty cool to see it in this state, at least initially. So this is pretty, pretty cool. It's a nice little Easter egg going back to, you know, the books and the movies, but also useful uh, both in practicality and In, uh, you know, kind of moving things forward. There's no chance I'm 
<laughs> and we got a big stack of chairs right in our way. This presents the perfect opportunity to teach you Evanesco. All right, the vanishing spell. You can cast Evanesco. To vanish certain objects, such as these chairs and other things here in the room. I suggest you So anything in the room or requirement, you can have an Evanesco. Uh, because of the storytelling, we can only use it on certain items in here. That's kind of a nice swish. Looping swish with the wand. And boom. I kind of like how the initial kind of shows you your wand movement for, for the spell. But then after that, you just automatically do it. Bam. Oh, look at that. We got some... Moonstone. Oh, sure enough. <laughs> we'll discuss that later. As I've mentioned several times before, whenever you see Moonstone, you want to pick it up. It'll come in handy. And it uh, looks like we're finally coming to the reason for all that. <laughs> I wondered where that went. So she's got her old school bag that she's going to look through. Which, uh, I mean, someone had to have grabbed and put in there. Alright, some more Moonstone. Now, depending on what spells you have, you should have Accio coming into this. And that's all you have to have. Uh, Leviosa. I think those are the only ones that you have to have, and the rest of them I don't think you need. Uh, if something's out of reach, you can use your, your Accio to bring it closer. Um, like this bag. There we go. Leviosa for anything that's... <laughs> Can't imagine why someone would want to put that in there. Hope this isn't as precarious as it looks. Alright. <laughs> You're falling apart, man. That's great. That's a nice little detail. So what? That's uh, an extra what? Twenty four. <laughs> wow! Look at that. They even have a Rebellion. WC. Bunch of paper lanterns. Nice lighting effect. How does anyone other than a house elf manage to get around in here? Just tapping that Revelio every chance I get. So now up to 32 Moonstone. What was that? I won't say no. Was that a gold? As I said, I'll take uh, as much as I can get. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. It's cool that they added a snitch in here, but uh, <laughs> some brooms. Why? Why did I buy a broom if there's a broom right here? I should be able to go ahead and just grab it. Yeah, snitch is gone. So, I think it was just uh, like an Easter egg. We don't have Quidditch, but there is a, a Snitch. Alright, come back here. Mm, 
there's a chest over there, but you can't get to it. So you basically have to move it, I think, in front or close enough to where you can open it. If you've got uh, Depulso, I think you can. it'll be a little bit easier, but just with Accio, you can do it as well. Just push, pulling stuff from uh, either side, the front or the side here, and just get it over to where it's close enough to you that you can open it. And it's going to be a little bit... It may be a little difficult getting that angle where you can search it, but you should be able to do it. Rebellion. All right. I think that was probably the last obstacle or challenge before we get to the end here. The light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, literal, literal light at the end of the tunnel. So here we go. Oh, and a flu flame. So it'll be nice that we can fast travel. Henceforward, directly to the room of requirement. <laughs> oh, there you are. Wait right there. Deke will come to you. There we go. Hello. Ah, oh, Deke, we've been looking for you. Uh, apologies, Professor. We Deke. Deke was looking through some of what's appeared. What are you doing rummaging around? Is this the student? Indeed it is. Deke is honored to meet you. Deke has been a friend since I was a second year. We discovered this room together. I mentioned you to Deke. We believe that you might be able to benefit from this room like I did. Deke, would you be so kind? Of course, Professor Weasley. The room of requirement will always be equipped for the Seeker's needs. It's unplottable, so won't appear on any map. Most happen upon it by accident, if ever. Deep-seen students in need of an extra file for potions stumble upon the room filled with them. You seem to have accessed it in its form as the Room of Hidden Things. I was thinking about needing a place away from prying eyes. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, that explains it then. What I need specifically is a place where I can catch up on my schoolwork without distraction. Well then, the room can provide you with precisely that. Now, it's time to focus on what you need. Just close your eyes. Imagine the room precisely as you need it. The room will do the rest. yourself quite a canvas to work with so with the power of our mind we've created this room of requirement especially for what we need it to do which is uh, catch up on schoolwork and do some other things as well at the same time all right plus we've got this which will help us identify all those things that we've gotten so far that were locked so here we go. I know there's at least a couple of items that I have. Four items. Two of them are better than what I already have. So there we go. So every so often you get some unidentifiable items come over and get them identified. Now at this point, hopefully... You've gotten enough galleons in your pocket that you can uh, pick some things up from tombs and scrolls in Hogsmeade. And I would recommend 
getting the uh, two large pot scroll and the three medium pot scroll. You can grow anything in the large pots. You can grow medium or small in the medium pots. And you're given one small pot. And also one potion station. So if you need more, uh, you can always get more. Um, but having the three pot and the two pot, medium and large, those are the most of that size that you can have. Uh, they're also the most expensive. So once you get 6,000 galleons, I would say get the three medium pot scroll uh, spellcraft and then the two large pot. Because you can, as long as you have the moonstone, uh, and there she mentions tombs and scrolls. As long as you have the moonstones, you can summon as many as you want up until you hit the uh, upper limit or maximum for that type of item. So eventually you could get the, the five small pot scroll. But for the most part, I would say having the medium and the large pots are the ones that you're going to want. Uh, the game is, I think, nudging you to buy stuff as soon as you can. So getting the, you know, like the two, two medium pot or one medium pot or one large pot and then coming back for the other ones, that's just extra money that you could have saved. You, like, you never need to buy the one large pot or one medium pot. Same thing with the two uh, potion brewing station, you don't need that. Just get the, the tea, the three uh, potion brewing station. When you get to that point where you can afford it. And then, of course, start thinking about getting like the beast feeders and the beast toy box, etc. So get things that you think you'll you'll probably need down the road. Oh, and something to get uh, early on after you unlock this uh, room requirement, I would say get the mineral refiner. You can buy moonstone for 20 a piece, or you can get the spellcraft, I think for 1,500. And the mineral refiner creates 10 moonstone every 10 minutes so the longer you have it the more worthwhile it is so if you have it early on shortly after or when you get the room of requirement then it's going to help you out a great deal uh, just remember to come back to the room of requirement every so often uh, in between side quests or main quests or if you're going around looking for uh, different things, trying to pick up field guide pages or uh, whatever you're, you have on your plate at the time. So we've got different colors, we've got different styles. Choose the one that you like. And the budget right now is just <laughs> just for one. And down the road you can look at some of these other uh, more optional types of items. But like I said, you're definitely going to want the three medium pots and the two large pots. Uh, the two large pots by themselves isn't going to be enough because each table only has two pots. There's at least three medium pots with each table. And it's obviously done for a reason because the uh, large pots can grow anything in them but you need a large pot for the large plants likewise you need medium pots for medium plants so large plants can't go in medium pots but medium plants can go in large pots and then small plants can go in any pots so here again different styles different colors choose whatever you want 
and Deke was walking right through it, so he, it was blocked. And then go ahead and put it down wherever you need it. And of course, uh, it tells you how much Moonstone you're going to need. The more utility, uh, in general, the more Moonstone you're going to need. So there we go. Uh, we'll come back and do the other one, and we'll probably move stuff around as well. Make the best use of our space. Can I use this type of transfiguration magic outside of the room? Conjuring and vanishing are strictly forbidden elsewhere in the castle. We've charms in place to enforce that. It would be exhausting to reverse the errors in both judgment and magic. But the room of requirement has its own rules. Can you tell me a bit more about Deke? He's been at Hogwarts longer than I have and seems to know it's every nook cranny and secret. We discovered this room together when I was a student. Deke has had a good deal of experience, both here at Hogwarts and at a previous post. I shall let Deke tell you more when he's ready, but again, you would be wise to listen to any suggestions he may have. I will be sure to speak with Deke if I need anything. Thank you. Good luck. I shall linger a bit longer in case you'd like to learn another transfiguration spell for use in the room. All right, so Professor Weasley obviously has other duties to attend to, so she's not going to stay in the room of requirement forever. She will only be here long enough to teach us one more spell that we can use here. And that Deke is a very valuable resource that we can use so we'll take a look here in our conjurations, what's new, and go ahead and at least get the uh, the newness off of it so that when we come back to it, we'll know when we have something that is indeed, in fact, new. Uh, but since we've picked up some things along the way before we got to this point, we've got a bunch of stuff that happens to be new. Um, and some things that are, you know, variations of the same thing. Desk of description. You only need one of those. The potting table, however, uh, we can have multiple of those. So putting in the large, two large pots. Very big table. And very big. <laughs> the pots are indeed large. So let's go ahead and get that in uh, up against the wall here. I guess that's uh, about the closest I can get to the wall. All right, so let's get stuff planted. And the other thing, of course, is that you need to make sure that you have the seeds from Magic Neep. So not only do you need the pots, but you also need the seeds, but you only need to buy the seeds once. You don't have to keep buying, uh, going back and buying more and more seeds. There you go. The large seeds are grayed out. Going to do the medium. So we got shrivel fig, Chinese chomping cabbage. And then everything else is a small. So there's two large, two medium, and four small plants that we can plant. We'll put a mandrake right next to the Chinese chomping cabbage. Go talk to Professor Weasley again while that lesson, is Very well. growing you away. All right. So hopefully, like I said, you've been gathering moonstone along the way. Uh, if you haven't, you can always vanish the things that are in the room currently to get more or you know if you don't like the overall aesthetic that there is uh you can go ahead and evanesco and get the moonstone back uh and there's a net zero gain or loss whenever you do that so however much moonstone it costs to put something in you're gonna get back 
on the walls and floor. So you can play around with it as much as you want and not have to worry about it, which is really cool. All right, so now we need to conjure five wall decorations and five floor decorations. So it doesn't really matter what you want to put in there, just as long as it's something. So you can put five of the same thing on the wall if you want. And you can see you can change the size of it. Boom, on the wall. Now, I don't think it is, when you're changing the size, I don't think it's a infinite scale. I think that's probably steps. So, you know, like a, uh, a 4-inch wall hanging versus an 8-inch wall hanging versus a 12-inch wall hanging. Uh, there's no 9-inch wall hanging. I conjured everything I can. What's next, Professor? I think you're ready to take on alteration. The altering spell will allow you to customize any conjured item. You can change the colors, patterns, and styles of your furniture to suit your taste. Let's get started, shall we? Watch closely as I demonstrate how to perform the altering spell. All right, so we're gonna learn the altering spell. So instead of having to vanish things and then conjure them back, we can just use the altering spell to change things how we want. Has a nice loop and a swish, or swoop and a flick. It's a Leviosa kind of spell. All right, so we've got three different spells now that can only be used in the Room of Requirement. The Vanishing spell, the Altering spell, and the Conjuring spell. So just know every time you come in here, you're going to need those three spells, or possibly... None of them, uh, depending on what you're going to do. But whenever you're going to change something or add something or subtract something, you're going to need at least one, if not all three spells. So either have uh, one of your spell sets for the room requirement or you know, just know that you're going to have to switch stuff around. All right. That's cool. Everything's kind of locked up for the moment. So we'll have to go through and we'll have to uh, alter some things around the, uh, before we can get any further along. So we've got, uh, we need to alter the style, the color, and the size. I wanted to make it larger, but it doesn't look like there's enough space or, or it's just not snapping to the wall like I want it to. Kind of like that stepstone. Uh, that I was talking about earlier, instead of having infinite size, it's either this size, this size, or no size. The large size of it uh, doesn't fit, at least on this wall. If we've got a bigger wall, we could probably fit it on there. So I guess we'll have to go with a smaller one, and we can change it back later. And then the same thing here. Yeah, I already put it down the way I wanted so if I wanted to change it, I mean, you can certainly change your mind and change things around. Uh, but right after you put it down, I doubt you're going to want to change it right off the bat. All right, so we need style and color. So we'll just change the color and style, and boom, we're done. All right, now we're ready to use the altering spell. Let's see, I'm just going to change it back real quick. <laughs> Uh, alter the balcony or the floor of the room. The balcony, huh? So that must be the balcony, right? Uh, nope, looks like it's the doorway. Well, we'll see if it counts. If not, we'll just do the floor. So each section of the room we can change. Uh, each section of the, the wall... And then, of course, the floor and then the ceiling, which we saw a little bit ago, which is really, really cool. 
You can personalize it to what you want. You can have everything be uh, one of the four different styles, which is nice. And now uh, ambiance. We're going to talk to Deke about that and see what he has to say. Let's see what Deke knows about ambiance. A nice candlelit dinner. Oh, here we go. So moonlight, full light, or no light. <laughs> now, of course, there's like chandeliers and candles, uh, which would cast light from within the room. So it all depends on what you want. So here we go. Sounds perfect. I picked the best one right off the bat. <laughs> uh, so before we had more of a like morning light, and now it's more like a noon. Quite a difference. I don't know if that changes with whatever it's going on outside or not, or if it's just always day and always kind of that noon noon glow. It'd be something to kind of look at. All right, so we can change whatever we want, whenever we want, however we want, as long as we have the moonstone to do it. Uh, if we need more, we can always have an Esco stuff, or we can go... Look for more Moonstone in the Highlands, or we can buy it. Uh, and plus, there's that uh, material refinery uh, spellcraft that we can get, which will give us Moonstone over time. Look at this. We got a bigger space all of a sudden with a little nook with enough room for four people. So we've got even more space that we can deal with because this little space here uh, probably wouldn't go very far. It's going to be uh, filled up relatively quickly, I want to say. So that is all the basics for that. Room of requirement with the spells, three spells that are corresponding. Now let's move on to Sebastian and see what he has for us now, since we've not seen him in a little while. Of course. Scribner tried to give me detention, but I have ways out of these things. Well, you took the fall for me, and that counts for something. Did you find what you were looking for? I did, but something was missing. I'm not sure here is the best place to discuss it. Understood. We can talk more in a moment, in the Undercroft. Not even the professors know about this place. Alright, so... Speaking of secret rooms, Sebastian knows of a secret room that only a couple of people know about. As, well, I think over the, the course of the different books and movie and uh, even the game, you see how people feel like Something is secret and nobody knows about it, but then all of a sudden you're like, oh, people people do know about these things, even if they don't necessarily know how it works. Uh, obviously, Sebastian knows how this works. There's a very specific requirement to get in. Uh, same thing with the room requirement, although this is more of a set room, whereas the room requirement changes depending on what you need. As we've seen, uh, this has a few different chests that we can open up. Um, looks like different pieces of gear. Quote, different pieces of gear, even though I've gotten how many? I've got three of the same thing. Two of them are uh, better than what I already have. So let's talk to Sebastian. I think I've seen Ominous in potions. Or was it Herbology? I've noticed that he uses his wand to navigate the castle. He does. No idea how, though. Ominous was born blind, and no spell could reverse it. His wand seems almost sentient. Not surprising, I suppose. Ollivander always says, the wand chooses the wizard. Is that how he found this place? No, someone in his family knew about it. The Gaunts are full of secrets. I've never heard anyone else speak of it. And I've certainly never seen anyone else here. Again, mention this to no one, especially Ominous. He has no love lost for his family or their secrets, but this place is special to him. Understood. But 
Why does Ominous have no love lost for his family? His father's family are direct descendants of Salazar Slytherin, one of the four founders of Hogwarts. Obsessed with blood status, most of them. Ominous cannot abide them, as he'll be the first to tell you. Anyway, the Undercroft has been a perfect place to sneak off to, away from prying eyes, and even practice otherwise forbidden spells. Really? Like what? Like the Blasting Curse. Professors say it's not an appropriate spell to teach students. It sounds like a dangerous spell. You sound like Ominous. He frowns upon using forbidden spells. Although he did enjoy learning this one. A spell like Confringo is only truly dangerous in untrained hands. Such spells should be properly taught, not banned. To be fair, I'm admittedly partial to more fiery forms of magic. But you should learn it. I can teach it to you safely here. All right, so let's learn a, a new get feel for spell, it. Confringo, movement. which is the, the Blasting is Curse. Confringo. I like how uh, the things that are bad or dangerous are all called curses, and the things that are approved or not as dangerous are, are spells. So this is good. This is a spell. That's a curse. You don't want to. You don't want anything to do with that. And I think there's a little bit of that you're stigma attached to it. So to all of a sudden you're out. like, oh, that's that's not good. That's bad. That's that's what you should use. That's what you shouldn't use. It kind of uh, adds to that. You know, the forbidden forest was well, forbidden. We can't go there. Uh, even though some students do, some students swing in the entirely opposite direction and are just. Uh, fearful of even tread upon the forest for fear of their life. Alright, that was fun. <laughs> and, and we find out why it's dangerous. They singe their eyebrows. So, even though they were probably, or at least trying to be careful, they still had uh, problems. And obviously, it was something that's like a... Uh, this is exactly you know, firecracker, a large firecracker, or a small explosive, it can be dangerous. Alright, got some more spells. So eventually, we can learn some more curses that we're not supposed to know about uh, from Sebastian. We'll have to... Uh, See how quickly we She's been stuck at home with our come to learn those. Uncle Solomon. Unfortunately, you'll have to I just like to have everything in the deck available, even if I'm not going to use it. You know, it's your option to use it or not, not someone else's requirement. But that's how I kind of feel about it. Alright, but uh, we'll stop here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check us out on social media. And thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you next time. You must promise to keep this between us. I trusted you with knowledge of the secret Undercroft. You can trust me. All right. I can see traces of ancient magic. Ancient magic? I don't know what I was expecting you to say, but it wasn't that. What does that even mean? Honestly, I'm not entirely certain. All I know is that I can see whispers of an old magic that hardly anyone else can. Fig and I think that Ranrock has somehow found a way to harness that magic's power. Are you telling me that goblins may be wielding some sort of wizard magic? That's what we're trying to find out. And this ability of yours, does this allow you to wield this magic too? I... I don't know. Well, when you do know, tell me. I've been studying archaic forms of magic for ages. Perhaps we can help each other. In the meantime, with both Rookwood and Ranrock after you, I suspect a bit more time practicing the blasting curses in order. Spend as much time here as you'd like. And remember, keep this place between us.
Hello, Sebastian. Wait. You there? I can hear you. Oh, hello. Ominous, isn't it? I believe we have potions together. And herbology? I recognize that voice. Heard you talking to Gareth Weasley in potions class. You're the new fifth year. Did you just come from the Undercroft? How did you get in there? That room's called the Undercroft. Ah, well, I was exploring and then suddenly found myself in a strange passageway. Don't lie to me. No one stumbles upon that room. Sebastian told you, didn't he? You breathe a word about this place to anyone, and not even your precious Professor Fig will be able to help you. My father is friends with the Headmaster. I am not afraid to exploit that connection if I need to. You needn't threaten me. I'm not going to say anything about your Undercroft. And Sebastian is a good friend. You shouldn't immediately assume the worst of him. I don't need you to tell me about my oldest friend. Thank you very much. Ominous, I just meant- I know what you meant. Sebastian gets himself in enough trouble. He doesn't need your help. Sebastian is going to get an earful about this. Station.